Hello everyone, I am Gilmer, and this is my first Let's Play ever. And my Let's Play is going to be on To End All Wars, which is a war game of World War I. This title was put out by Ajod in the year 2014, and it was sort of put out in conjunction with the centennial of the actual start of To End All Wars 100 years before. And part of the reason why I want to do this Let's Play is because if you go to YouTube and do and do a search on Let's Plays for World War I, you don't find many. You find you can find a lot for World War II, but there are not very many for World War I. Also, if you go and you do a search for Let's Play of To End All Wars, you get even less. And actually, on YouTube, there are three Let's Plays that I could find of To End All Wars. One of them was done by the Historical War Gamer. Excellent, excellent job. Do not have any complaints. The second one is done by Pew Pew Choo Choo. Excellent job. And the third one is by somebody named Camarita, who I haven't watched the whole, all of them. I've watched the first two episodes, and he looks like he's doing a very great, a very good job as well. But the one thing I have that kind of, well, actually two things. Two things I have that made me want to do a Let's Play was for the historical war gamer and Pew Pew Choo Choo, they do a lot of different games. And they they move around and some, you know, I don't know if they finish their two end all war uh, Let's Plays, but even though they're doing a good job, sometimes they'll move to a newer title because that's what their subscribers want, which is fine. That, that, that's exactly you know what their, their subscribers are expecting them to do. I just wanted to do a Let's Play channel with a little bit more focus on the E-Job titles because I really like this company and I really like the games they put out. E-Job stands behind every one of their their games. They, they run their own forums and the owners of the company are actually very active on their forums and if somebody has you know, something where they want something in the game corrected because they say it's it's not accurate for whatever reason and they can back that up the the owners will actually put that in a patch and fix it in the game if if they agree with it they'll look at it and they'll agree with it not very many companies will do that most companies that I know of they put out patches but most of the times, they, they just throw a game out there, and usually it's it's not even finished, and they'll patch it maybe one time or two times, and then they're on to the next thing. Aja doesn't do that. They keep going back to all their older older titles and keep repatching. They're repatching games from 2007 still, and not because there are a lot of a lot of inaccuracies, but more because if they see something that needs to be fixed, they'll do it. I think that speaks very highly of them. So I want to do a little bit more Let's Plays on age-odd titles. And as I said, To End All Wars was about World War I. It was once described as the War to End All Wars. That's where they get the name from. So another thing that I noticed with some of the Let's Plays, one of, one of the Let's Plays, they didn't understand all the intricacies, and I'm not saying I'm an expert on e-job titles. I, no way am I ever going to say I'm an expert on it. But things like diplomacy, they didn't really understand how diplomacy works. And that's partly because the manual isn't necessarily that descriptive of what you do or how you how you work with diplomacy. And so I'm, I'm not criticizing them. I just I want maybe a let's play that is from somebody that Know, knows a little bit more about the actual what you do in the game. Not saying I can beat the game on the hardest difficulty because I can't. But I just want, you know, somebody from the beginning, oh, diplomacy, I'll tell you exactly how to use that. And some people looking at it will immediately, maybe in the first turn or so, know what diplomacy does and how it affects the game. So that's why I wanted to do a Let's Play. So let's click on new for a new scenario. And I'm going to play a full campaign. And the reason I'm going to play a full campaign this scenario is because these two are almost exactly alike. 
One says Great War Historical Campaign. What does that mean? It means every every war plan that people, the major powers used historically, they're going to use in this scenario. But if you know anything about military powers, they always have several war plans that they have for any contingency. So that's where this comes in. In this game, in this scenario, you have an extra turn, and you can pick an ahistorical war plan. And that's why I wanted to do it, because I want to pick a, a historical war plan. If you want to play the historical campaign, the other one would be more suited to you. Why would you play the t pick this one and just to pick the historical campaign? So anyway, I you have three parties that you could, one of three you could play. You can play the Central Powers, you can play the Western Entente, and you can play the Eastern Entente. I like the Western Entente. I think Central Powers would be a little too tough for me because they put, they're fighting a two-front war. So I'm going to play Western Entente, and I'm going to choose my war plan. So let's click Play. Okay, here we go. Down here you have filters for the messages. And these are the messages. I'm not going to go through every single message, but the red ones are very important. The first message, Guns of August 1914. This scenario covers the whole war after the initial historical attacks in August 1914 until 1919. Good. Let's X that. Click the second one. Archduke Fer Franz Ferdinand is assassinated. This is what most historians say caused World War One to happen. And Franz, Franz Ferdinand was the heir to the Austrian Empire. And some Bosnian slash Serb nationalists assassinated him. And that gave Austria the opening to make some demands of Serbia. And Serbia accepted, it was a nine point ultimatum, Serbia accepted eight of them and rejected the ninth one. Well, because of that, Austria decided to, to declare war. Well, Serbia was a, an ally of Russia, so Russia decided to declare war on Austria. Well, when Russia declared war on Austria, Germany declared war on Russia because Germany was an ally of Austria. So then France decided to, to declare war on Germany because I think they were allied to Russia at the time. So it kind of was, as people have described it before, a domino effect of alliances that caused the outbreak of World War I, which was initiated by the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Preparing for war. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is the first turn, and this turn is when you get to pick your war plan. You want to pick an ahistorical, if you want to pick an ahistorical war plan. Well, you could still pick a historical war plan, but I just don't see the point. You click F3, and then you can left-click on this, and it brings up this screen. These are the four war plans. Currently, the historical option is selected. It's not what I want to do. It calls for an immediate offensive against Germany to take priority over other concerns. Well, okay. That's fine, but I don't know. I don't really like it. I mean, just because it's historical and it's been done. The second one was Plan 13. This back, the background on this one is this plan has the French army assume a, a defensive stance in the West, hoping to draw the German army towards the heavy fortifications on the Franco-German frontier. I don't really like that. I don't like assuming a defensive stance. So that one is not going to be done. I'm going to jump to this one because I know what plan I'm going to pick, and it is going to be plan 19. So I just want to look at plan 20 before I reject it. Background. This plan calls for an invasion of Belgium, attempting to preempt a German offensive from the same direction. Penalties. Great Britain suffers a minus 20 relations with Western Entente. This is a bad plan. This is... Great Britain basically promised Belgium, if Germany attacked them, that they would attack, you know, they would declare war on Germany. That's what brought Great Britain into the war. If France attacks Belgium, it's going to really make Great Britain really angry. Now, 
Great Britain will still eventually probably join the Western Entente, but it's going to take them a while. And the longer it takes, the worse it is for France, because you really need Great Britain to join the, the arm. I mean, join the Western Entente almost immediately. And they're they're not in the Western Entente when war breaks out. So you really want to stay away from angering them too much. So that brings me to Plan 19. Background. This plan calls for an offensive against Germany, which I like, attempting to flank any German attempt to invade Belgium by sending three armies through Luxembourg and the Ardennes. Well, I like this one. And the reason I like it is because declaring war on Luxembourg doesn't have that many penalties going against it. It has a few, but it's not enough for me to be worried about the eventual conclusion of you know the penalties so the penalties are well it says the penalties are none but under various down at the bottom it says France declares war on Luxembourg which slightly harms relations with Great Britain and the United States even so it Great Britain still will come in on in the war on the Western Entente side usually within the first three or four turns if I play my diplomats right the United States takes a little longer, but because of events, and, and if I use my diplomats effectively, they usually join the Western Entente around September of 1916, if I remember correctly. So I'm not too worried about that, because even September of 1916, I think that is historically sooner than what the USA actually did, so I, I don't have a problem with that. The one big thing is, if you look under just under objectives, it says EP plus four. Well, that's engagement points plus four. That's good for me because engagement points are used to buy political decisions and I need as many engagement points as I can use. The second one is the worst one. Rail capacity minus 1,000 initially. Armies in this day and age in 1914 moved by rail. That's the most efficient way. If you can't move armies by rail, it's going to hurt. It comes back in time for me that it, it's not that big of a deal, and by that, you know, by 1916 or so, I have more rail than I can use. But initially, it will hurt, but I don't really care because it'll eventually come back, and I'm I'm okay with that. So I'm going to take the French war plan, and that is basically the end of first the first turn. I've already done that, so. I'm going to close this because I have had a lot of troubles with the a lot of trouble with these videos and getting them saved and getting them you know without any errors in them or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and close. My name is Gilmer, and this is my first let's play. It's a let's play of two end all wars. If you have any suggestions, please post them below, and I'll try to get to them and see if I can incorporate them if if there's something I want to do. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. I thank you for watching. If you like it, please click like. And if you dislike it, well, don't put, click dislike. Just put it in the notes or something. I'll put it in the post or something. Just, But, uh, you know, it's my first let's play. I'm going to make mistakes. I know that one of the things that I do, I don't say a lot of um or ah, but I do stutter sometimes, and I do sometimes have points where I don't say anything. That's that's what I do instead of um and on. I, I, I freeze and won't say anything for three or four seconds trying to figure out what I want to say. So, as I said, I appreciate you watching the Let's Play and I hope to be back very soon. Thank you.